Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it, how you're doing it, wherever you're doing it. You'd think after 98 episodes, <laughs> I would know when the little caca would happen in our do you intro still not song. Know? I do it sometimes, and sometimes <laughs> I'm a little bit early. If I don't think about it, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. If I do think about it, I've doomed myself to failure. That is highly unfortunate. Guys, as always, this episode of It Resolved is... It Resolved. It Resolved. We're done. <laughs> you'd think you'd know our game. <laughs> this episode of It Resolves is sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com. Go there for all of your buying and selling needs. They're fantastic. I actually yeah. used them just a few days ago, and they're yeah. fantastic. I use them pretty regularly, actually. Yeah. Uh, Great card really grading awesome. site if yeah. you're into that, which you should be if you buy it's, singles. It's a really good way to get singles at way less than you would buy them on anywhere, like any other website or anything yeah, like that, because you get to name your own price. You can set a maximum price that you'll pay, and you can kind of go off of, which seems to be the norm, you can go off of like buy list prices from stuff like Card Kingdom. Uh, so instead of yeah. paying full price, you get buy list price. So it's it's a little bit better. Uh, that was but, a long shout out. Man. Yeah, it was. Way to go, Card Sphere. <laughs> well, they're worth it. They're, they're worth great. It. If you collect or play. Maybe it's Maple Beard. Um, anyway, what was the... What? I don't know. I was trying to think of the... Did you say the, maybe it's Maybelline? Yeah, I did. What was the... <laughs> the uh, I'm not even going to go into All it. Right. Guys, the schedule for today. Um, <laughs> we are, of course, going to go over our random card of the day. Then we are going to talk about GP Vegas. Uh, some really uh, awesome, interesting stuff for Modern there. And then yeah. we are going to have, of course, our question of the week. And then our Cracker Packs, sponsored by Grand Slam. But let's kick it off with our random card of the day in three, two, two one. A Thank good one. You. The Finally. gods exist. Uh, Blood Braid Elf. Mm. <laughs> Blood Braid Elf. <laughs> uh, two, a red and a green for a three, two elf berserker with haste and cascade. If you don't know what cascade does, when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile, exile a non land card that costs less. <laughs> You may then cast it without paying its mana cost. You put all the other cards on the bottom in a random order. This card's amazing. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about broken mechanics? A few come to mind. Storm. <laughs> um, some, one of my friends at one time said Phyrexian mana was broken. I don't know about kind that. Kind of. It kind of is. I, Mental misstep mm, in particular. Yeah. And Git Probe. Well, okay. The freebies. Git Probe wasn't broken. It wasn't broken, but it enabled the, a lot. Yes. But that didn't make it It didn't make broken. it broken, that's fair. But uh, Cascade also comes up a lot. Uh, would you like to cast free things? The answer Forget is always thing. yes. Two cards for the price of one. They actually tried to fix this kind of recently. Do um, tell. Do in, tell. Was it the Expertise cards? Was it Kaladesh that that was? Uh, Baral's Expertise and stuff like that. The, it, the way they fixed it was you played mm. like Baral's Expertise, and then you got Cascade, sort of. But it wasn't from your deck. It was just a card from your hand that was less, and you could play it for free. Ah, okay. Um, okay. And so it was sort of like a fixed cast okay. game. Okay. Um, but the idea with this was obviously it's hyper aggressive. Haste oh, yeah. three two for four. That's great already. Well, uh, it's good already. Uh, but Cascade really takes this over the top. It was banned in Modern for an extended period of time. We right. just fairly recently, I guess, got it back. Yep. Um, and it didn't have the takeover that a lot of people expected, including us. Well, yeah, us. We, um, I was afraid of Blood I was Raid. more afraid of this than Jace. I was afraid of Jund, yeah, yeah, kind of in general. But, yeah, um, it didn't take over. But it all. is still a fantastic card and a staple in those mm -hmm. decks, uh, in Jund decks now. But um, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. fantastic. I, don't, I mean... What else is there to say? Um, well, that holds a historic spot in Magic's history. We've talked about it plenty of times on the show. Yeah, plenty yeah. of people have talked about it. There was a time when this was like one of the dreaded cards. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. So. Um, the thing is, you can blood braid into like right now, blood braid into Colgon's command. Yeah, I that's mean, great. That's insane value. Uh, even at worst, blood braid into say a Thoughtsees, right? Like that's still really good. <laughs> you just yeah. get a free card out of their hand. Um, it's just insane. Like the the value off of this card is fantastic. So yeah, yeah. You can't say enough good stuff about it. Um, I guess downsides. It's easily removed as a standalone dies to bolt. threat. Yeah, dies to bolt. Dies, dies to, to shock. Command. It does die yeah. to bolt against command. Um, it sometimes dies to fatal push. Not always. Yeah. Pretty much any um, removal in modern. Yeah, gets exactly. Blood braid, pretty much. Um, but generally speaking, it's gonna hopefully get in there for a few points of damage and give you some extra value. Yeah. That's I mean, it just for. it just 
keeps John uh, it gives John more value than yeah. its opponent really all the time. Um, and it's all. great also against control decks, which can sometimes be kind of difficult to deal with. And the reason being, the Cascaded card and Blood Braid both go on the stack. So if they're going to counter something, they have to choose which one. Yeah. If they only have enough mana for one counter. True. Um, or if they only have one counter. If they only know. have one counter, yeah. They so have, they um, have a choice. It's, it's just really good value. Yeah. It's perfectly jund. <laughs> um, Blood all right. Braid. Good Moving guy. on to uh, GP Vegas. Obviously, this is sort of the big GP of the year. Yeah, I'd say. I'd say. It's the yearly mecca. Yeah, for- it's like everybody gets together in vegas and hangs out and does nerd stuff i um, mean if you're gonna get together in a place vegas is a good place for it yeah i'd That's say I'm saying. one of us was born in vegas kevin do you know which one? Oh my gosh who <laughs> <laughs> was it me yes yes it was you no i was born like 10 minutes down the road from you <laughs> that's fine were you actually born in vegas actually i didn't 100%. know 100 percent <laughs> yep if only 50 percent of me was born in vegas I mean, I guess... I was no, on the could. line. I was going to say. Well, I guess, yeah, there's a, a city limits at some point, but there's not a hospital there. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Fun fact. Ta-da! I came it all the way from trivia. Nevada to do this podcast. Worth it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Let's stay on topic, Kevin. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, I'm bud. enjoying myself. Uh, let's talk about Vegas. Hey, Will, talk about Vegas. <laughs> All right, gladly. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much the big GP. Uh, everything. I'm sorry, I'm fiddling with my mic. Uh, everything happens here. It's that's addicting to fiddle. Gonna with happen. My mic. I just want to point out. Sorry. Well, I also have to position it correctly. Um, so yeah, a bunch of different <laughs> events happened uh, at this Grand Prix. Um, you had the Modern was like the big ticket event. Yeah. Limited. Uh, Dominary limited specifically. <laughs> Uh, a beta draft. Yeah, that was that's that cool. was the, another limited event. Yeah, a beta was <laughs> that it sealed was or draft? Limited. Uh, I think it was draft. I actually don't know though. Um, we so spoilers. We're recording on Sunday. It's technically still going on right now. Yeah, it is. Uh, so like we don't know all that has actually happened with GP Vegas. Well, we don't know. We don't know the limited outcomes. Yeah, but exactly. Um, most talk, of what we're yeah. focusing on is the modern stuff. Yeah. For this episode, obviously, yeah. we may go over some other stuff. You should. Next wa- I mean, watch limited gameplay. It's hap- as we're speaking. It's happening yeah. on Twitch. It's awesome. We go might, do that. We might watch that when we're done. We probably will. Um, yeah, watch the limited stuff just because it's awesome fun. Um, but modern happened, and since it's a ticketed ticketed a sanctioned listen to me a sanctioned modern event it has implications <laughs> for the format has yeah. implications for the meta etc cetera, etc cetera, which we'll probably talk about it um other fun stuff that happened at gp vegas uh since vegas is a weird place to get married in general <laughs> uh there was a magic the gathering themed wedding which there have been before uh i want to point out but it's, yeah it but it how many again. like like one <laughs> all right it was just in like a you know the um uh what was the walking the plains or whatever it is yeah the like little series the, the mini series, series. Yeah, yeah um I love they talked about like how magic brings people together and yeah. then they went into like there was an actual wedding at a gp it might have been a past vegas gp i think it might have i think it was you get married anywhere in vegas, you get married so anywhere in vegas it probably so was the easy way to do it Literally, no, <laughs> they're drive through chapels. Yeah, 100%. And there's a priest at the window, and he's like, Dear you, blah, 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 take the blah, 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 to be your blah, blah, blah. And you're usually like, I do. Some people say I don't. That gets awkward. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Because they um, ask you to pull back around and ask, you know, <laughs> redo your order. <laughs> um, One but divorce, yeah. please. Really interesting. So we are, like we said, going to focus on the modern stuff, uh, specifically the top mm-hmm. eight decks, what we actually saw there, and yep. speci- just some interesting stuff that we found. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. talk about the decks, do we just want to mention all the decks first? Yeah. Because there's actually a decent variety. Um, so yeah, we can get through it. It's not unexpected variety, but it's a decent variety. So we can go through it. <laughs> uh, Car Clan Ironworks is in there, I believe, twice. Uh, two, two mono KCIs, green yeah. Tron, Tron decks. Excuse me. Humans as a one show. A Grixis Death Shadow. <laughs> another Tron. Uh, Jeskai Control, and then my personal favorite, and probably Will's Bant Company, uh, made its comeback. I'm pretty excited about that. I didn't expect to see this, so uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. So. First thing awesome. I want to knock out really quick because it'll only take a couple seconds. Interesting sure. new Dominaria cards that we're seeing. Sure. There are 
Maybe two. Uh, so Jeskai, Control, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Oh, technically there are three. Uh, is there? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Teferi is in the main board as a two of of the Jeskai list. I think that's awesome. I really like Teferi. Mm -hmm. I was skeptical about his place in Modern. I think some of the Jeskai decks are proving me wrong. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I haven't seen the gameplay yet, and obviously this is a new card, so we won't know how this fleshes out in the next Modern GP. Uh, but I'm interested to see if he sticks around. Uh, interesting card, though. He's perfect for control, right? Uh, yes, and I think the fact that there are two in the main board and none in the sideboard are kind of indication that Modern's still unsure about him. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. 100%. He definitely adds tons of value turn five. I mean, he's a Planeswalker, essentially, on turn five that will probably cast cast cost only three mana. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think nine times out of ten, you draw a card and untap stuff. Yeah. Especially in Jeskai when you want to have answers for everything, which is what it does best. Yeah. Um, no, I think you're right. I, and I think it, it gives a good unanswered. Oh, that's always the caveat, but it does give you a great, like, ult. Right? Oh, man, yeah. The ultimate. Like, that's amazing. kind of the, the clincher right there um, to start exiling stuff. Yeah, it's super um, good. So, yeah, he's great. Uh, he, I mean, he's really just a draw engine, you think? Yeah, for the most Mostly. part. Um, but he's a draw engine that also lets you leave up mana. And leave that's up mana the important thing. And it potentially get rid of a get rid of a threat for a few turns. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in modern, especially, for a control deck, that's awesome. To know when they're going to have it again and to yeah. not have to deal with it for a little while, that's great. Yeah. So his, his minus three is... Fantastic. And not to mention, too, if you do bounce, like, a uh, a really important mm -hmm. threat, it kind of takes your opponent either... It gives them the choice of, okay, do I use my fetch land? Because fetch lands are everywhere. You know they're going to have them. Are they going to use their fetch land to shuffle that away and maybe see what happens? Or are they just going to wait it out and get to no, that? No, yeah, I don't think... Like, I think it depends on the threat and what position you're in. But, like, if it's a big threat, you might just have to play fetches and not crack them. And then you might yeah. be short on mana. Like, there's implications with that that it's yeah. actually very relevant. Definitely. Um, so I think that's really cool. Do you think yeah. without Teferi's plus one, do you think he'd be modern playable? I don't think so. I think the plus one's, like, insanely good. Yeah, I do um, too. 100%. Like, that's what makes him so good because mm -hmm. you can leave up the counter after you play him. Right. Um, so, that and with things like thought. Logic Knot, which technically only costs, like, two mana plus delve, you know? Yeah. Uh, mana Leak. Um, Cryptic, it just helps you get there, I guess. But Spell Snare, you know, there's interesting things there. There's a bunch of stuff that it, you know... It lets you leave up. Yeah, yeah. So it's sweet. Um, Dampening Sphere is another card. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all expected Dampening Sphere. I'm kind of surprised I didn't, I didn't see more of it. Uh, but it's a one-of in the Jeskai sideboard. Uh, I mean, against yeah. Tron, right? It's just... Yeah. It's the perfect card against Tron. <laughs> just shuts it down. Um, the last card was Karn. Uh, oh, then there are more than I was thinking of. Really? What was the fourth one that you were thinking of? There are five. Five? Yeah. Karn. I'm trying to give you a hint. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. There's an angelic card. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I got excited about that one. There, You could say there there are sagas written about oh. the cards. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing. right, you're right, you're right. Um, Did I help? Yeah, you definitely helped. Uh, okay, Karn is a one of in yeah. the sideboard of Atron deck. We both disagree on this in the sense that we don't think it should be in the deck. Right, yeah. Um, we think that the other card's better in yeah. Tron. Oh, I mean, like, by very far. clearly, right? I don't know what that what that adds to Tron. I don't know either. I guess Tron doesn't really have a way to dig most yeah, of the I time. Yeah, I mean, it's card draw, I guess. And it does, like, spit out. But you're, I mean, you artifacts. Don't, you're you not don't really going to play that many. Yeah, no, no, I mean, no. the ones you play, you crack immediately or do something with. Right. So, like, Yeah, not, I just think it's, I think, I don't, but I don't know if it's better served that slot, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, ah, I'm not a fan. Eh. Um, I'd have to test with it. I don't know. Yeah, one of the KCI decks ran to Antiquities War. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to see Saga's actually making a splash. Uh, it was only in one of them, though, and that makes... And again, as a two of in the main board, and as you said, that kind of makes me think, I'm not really sure if it's going to stick around. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it makes sense. It's a value engine, right? Definitely. And it also gives um, some power and toughness to some stuff, if need be. Yeah, I think it's. I don't think you play it in hopes of getting to turn three. I think you play it to like dig for your combo. I think so. Because at 
Because, I mean, you don't need a 5-5 five, five beater in KCI. No, you really cause you've don't. Because you've got Emrakul or Pyrite. So. Yeah, that's you know? fair. That's you know? fair. Yes. But yes. even so, it digs. So that's good. Digs. Digging is good. Yes. Uh, the last one is the one I kind of like the most, maybe, other than Teferi. Uh, Shalai, right. Voice of Plenty. So this yep. was a sideboard, <laughs> only a one of, but in the Bant Company deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And it seems mm-hmm. perfect for this deck. It seems reachy a bit to me it's okay. like i don't know if you super need it um but it yeah. is just super powerful if you don't know it gives everything hexproof basically yeah uh and with the combo you can give everything infinite plus one plus one counters that's yep. sort of the implication but again there's just i feel like there might be better ways to do it so i don't know if you need this card it just seems really interesting yeah i think with we'll talk about the list because i think this is the most i mean this it's is the, the most it's interesting. fun it's fun <laughs> um i think with selfless spirit being in the deck you don't necessarily need to give everyone hexproof yeah but it's nice not to have to sack something it is i suppose I mean, um, well it's nice too because like against like a Jun list where a lot of the removal is kind of one for one mm-hmm. it's like fatal pushes and bolts and stuff like that yeah and this doesn't get hit by bolt most of the time not by fatal push i say most of the time part of the time not by fatal push right. um so it's like it's a decent protective kind of card you know what i mean but like sure. i don't know it just doesn't seem like it does that much no i guess with with the infinite one ones if for some reason like you had to drop uh what is it no because you still have the infinite mana i don't know i was gonna say for some reason if the um well no that makes sense if for some reason ballista was out of reach i guess what if it gets exiled i mean yeah, you have a maybe. backup that can put one ones on your birds I don't yeah know. i don't know it's just nice you can it's do nice. things it's i don't fine. think you need it but that's why it's in the sideboard you know yeah i mean that's fair. if you think it'd be a good matchup give everyone hexproof and there you go that's fair yeah. um do you want to go ahead and, since this is your favorite deck, do you want to go ahead and talk about this in a little Heck bit? yes. Go for it. Heck yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, it resolves Easter egg a little bit coming out here. Wait, wait. I'm so sorry. What? Do we want to also announce who won and all that stuff? Oh, we should. We should probably we should do, do that, that first. Uh, unfortunately, right. this deck didn't win. <laughs> no. Uh, KCI did combo won uh, yeah. by Matt Nass. Congratulations, Matt. Good for him. He's a great yeah. player if you don't know who he is. Uh, really good player. He won KCI combo. That's yep. all I needed to say. Um, he was against Tron, which if KCI yeah. I think is going to win, I think it's against Tron. Yeah, if um, Tron has a slow start, then KCI just runs it over 100%. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have any interactivity. Right? Exactly. Gets and that's the thing. Like boom. It's, it's sort of whichever one gets there faster, it just is going to win. It's kind yeah. of a goldfish kind of game. But yeah. yeah. Um, Definitely. So congratulations, Matt Nass. Yeah. Now, Ready to go. I will pass it over to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will accept priority. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hey. Ooh, all right. Yes. So um, uh, this went under the name of Bant Company, but it's uh, Vizier. Yes. Basically Vizier The deck Company. we have talked about before. Um, yeah. So episode like 20 something. Was it that early on? It was, re- it was before Man. we had video. Wow. Yeah. Guys, we've come a long way. Right? When our logo just used to... Right there on YouTube. <laughs> it resolves uh, for an hour. If you are a podcast <laughs> exclusive listener, that won't mean anything to you. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we talked about this, and this deck got me pumped. It's so sweet. I mean, it's it's kind of a riff off of a spl- a um, birthing pod combo, but yeah. I think it's fun. Um, I think it's more fun because you can do it with a standard card. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know the combo. Vizier of Remedies and Devoted Druid. Uh, infinite mana. Yeah, gives you infinite mana, so you can do infinite things. Um, works with kitchen. Well, they don't have a wait a minute, Kev. They don't have a sack outlet, do they? I guess you could kill it with ballista. Uh, yeah, you could kill it with ballista. For we just sure. we just noticed that that's like the only way to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. I also huh. think that's more of just like a padding kind of thing. I don't think you actually go for the infinite life combo. No, but. Oops, I clicked on that one. I mean, no, but eh, you know the I mean? other one had it, is all I'm saying. Yeah, and the other one had Murderous Red Cap, too. <laughs> yeah, uh, which yeah, is dude. real sweet. Um, yeah, this dude. does not have that. It's much more of a streamlined deck. Yep. Uh, the one real win condition is infinite mana into Ballista. Mm-hmm. Um, but it which does have some interesting ways to get that. I think is a little bit more consistent, right? I think so. Because you, yeah. need, you need what? Core. 
because I'm, I'm thinking now you need more pieces to get that out than yeah with absolutely this. you'd have to have red cap um viscerous ear viscerous ear you need um some tan uh tandem with the uh vizier yeah you know what i'm thinking you know um, what I'm yeah yeah I, I think so sure oh, i was no, thinking no no no, no. So Cause, the thing i'm thinking red cap's got wither yeah, that's has. right. Because no, so, so no, you don't. It's got the same. The thing Sorry. that I it has persist, not wither. Um, <laughs> what's wither? Wither it deals damage and negative one, negative one counters. I was persist. persist when it comes in with yeah, yeah. You know what I meant. Um, what I think is interesting is because this plays collected company, it means that the murderous red cap is not out of range. Like you don't have to worry about a card that's part of the combo being out of range. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, wow. and I think it's interesting too, yes, there is an interaction where if you collect a company into your Ballista, it will die immediately, but right. this deck runs four Ewits, Eternal Witness. Uh, yeah. And so you're able to bring them back. Like if you, if you lose your Ballista for any mm-hmm. reason, uh, you're able to get it back very easily. Um, and generally speaking, you're going to chug through this deck pretty quickly because mm-hmm. you do have four Court of Calling, four Collected Company, as well as two Duskwatch Recruiter. Yeah, you'll uh, see a lot of this deck. Yeah, so you will see a good bit. Plus, there's, like, not a lot of card draw, but there is no. Tireless Tracker for, like, clue stuff. Um, and yeah. then there is also three Horizon Canopy for card draw. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's interesting, but there is one interaction that we found that was yeah. really cool. So, what's cool <laughs> about this deck is that it's kind of a creature toolbox deck. Not as much as, like, humans, you'd sure. say. Um, but there is a singular, a, a one-of card, which normally I hate. <laughs> you really don't like one I of. don't. I don't. <laughs> I think if it's got an effect that affects, like, that adds to your deck, streamline it. You want more of that thing, make it simple. Don't have all of these weird cards everywhere yeah however <laughs> judge is familiar as a one of so back in return to ravnica one one flyer you know how i love my one one flyers yeah, yeah. um sack judge is familiar counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays one so kevin and i were thinking putting our brains together why is this card in here if, as a one of if you true. as a one of that's right uh it makes perfect sense so cord is an instant as you may remember, if they are casting something that is scary that they tap out for, uh, you Court of Calling into Judge's Familiar. <laughs> yeah. That's great. It's really cool. So Cord says uh, the creature you get hits the battlefield instantly, yeah. right? So then you just sack it yeah. instantly, and that thing is countered. So It's just instant speed done. protection, uh, yeah. which is amazing. I think that's really cool. Uh, at first, we were very confused as to why it was in there, but it does yeah. make sense. Yeah, um, it's great. Uh, I would say it would feel really bad, though, to, like, Court of Calling into it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? If that, like, that, if that was your only terrible. hit, definitely. Um, definitely. But I think more times, I mean, it's a one of. That's the idea. It's but I do, I do like the presence of Judges Familiar yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I played it a lot in Standard. Um, back in Return, definitely in Sealed, too, I played Blue White <laughs> a lot. Dude, it was so good. Sorry. There's a beep outside the door. I got confused. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I played Blue Light in Return a lot in Limited, in Sealed, in St- <laughs> that was my that was my favorite. Um, and the presence of Judges Familiar just keeps everyone back a turn. Yeah. Really, if they it, yeah, yeah. either they have to pitch something to answer it, or they just have to wait until they have an extra mana, which is cool. Um, but as a one of in Modern, it was interesting. But this deck also runs a number of other little toolbox one ofs. You have Courser. I guess it kind of helps you deal with burn, you know. Yeah, it's you just, you it's life. great against mono red. It doesn't yeah. die to bolt. Uh, right. It gives you that extra life, and it mm-hmm. like it blocks it helps efficiently you chug in red. Your deck a little right. bit too. Yeah, it blocks efficiently. For sure. um, definitely. For sure. Um, and I guess you know if you have instantly a profitable collecting company, if you have closer yeah, out. That's true. Um, and then uh, the one of Kitchen Finks that we mentioned, uh, Reflector Mage. Yeah, I mean, again, you cord awesome. into it, right? Yeah you want to uh so yeah this deck is just great the list is on uh magic's website if you want to look at it make it yourself really honestly looking at it the deck isn't that expensive in and of itself no except for the noble hierarchs noble hierarch is up there and some of the lands but lands are always expensive well right i mean you You should expect to drop like half the deck's price on lands pretty much in modern 
Always. Yeah. I mean, you don't need the expedition breeding pools, but if you want them, <laughs> <laughs> there they are. You want to look pretty. Uh, Horizon Canopy, even though they just got a reprint, you know? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these cards have been yeah. reprinted actually pretty recently, but mm -hmm. uh, the price is still up there. But yep. like he said, a lot of the pieces are pretty cheap. I mean, Birds of yep. Paradise is a great card. It's really only a few bucks, though. Um, I mean, because it's been reprinted it's forever. It's been reprinted a million times. Reflector yeah. Mage is an uncommon. Vizier is an uncommon. Um, Vizier's like 25 cents. Yeah. Maybe more now because it's played in modern, but... Devoted Druid recently did drop a little bit. Uh, I think it's around the 5 to $6 mark instead of the like 10 or $11 yeah. mark that it was at. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, Coco's probably 10 15 maybe. Yeah. Uh, Court of Calling is kind of up there. Is it? It's like 20 bucks or something like oh, that. Oh, that doesn't help me. Actually, that's, um, that's the gathering. But Court of Calling is a great card. You should always have it. So Yeah, if, you're you're play, a if you play deck. Commander, you got to have Cord. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was like the most interesting list. Um, do you want to go over KCI since it's not a deck? We can. Mentioned? I mean, since, okay, KCI is the deck that won, so we probably should go over it. Um, do you want to go over it? I don't. You don't want to? No, I don't like KCI that much. <laughs> Why not? It's a combo deck. It's a combo deck, but it's this kind of a had, jank yeah. deck. Um, okay, sure. The I yeah, go for it. You play a bunch of artifacts, and then with KCI, Crack Clan Ironworks, sacrifice an artifact, add two to your mana pool. You can do one of two things, really. Either uh, Pirates Bob Bomb. Yep. And you get Pyrite back with something, right? Uh, Grove, is it... Do, do, do. How do you get it back? There is a card that gets it back, and I can't remember what it is. You tell me. Let's see. I haven't played this deck ever. I know roughly how it works, but there is a loop somehow with Pyrite Spellbomb and Grove of the Burn Willows, I think. But no, I'm mixing that up. That's another card. My mistake. I don't know how you loop it. I don't know either. I don't know how you loop it. Anyway, if you don't do that. Yeah. If you're not doing that, you can also cast an Emrakul, which you seems can. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Nass's deck, yeah, we'll deck it out. worth noting, though, does not run Emrakul in the main board. No, it does um, not. It actually doesn't run it at all, but nope. uh, it is an interesting deck for sure. There is a sideboard tech with the Aether Grid uh, where you can... It's sort of an alternate win condition because you just tap artifacts and then deal one damage. It's a really slow combo, but you can make that happen. I don't know. In this deck... You generate a lot of mana. You do generate quite a bit. Um, the idea so is to generate a, a ton. Play so. much stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah. So if you're not pyriding them, you are playing Emrakul or yep. some other kind of scary, uh, uh, kind of scary card. Yep. Um, yeah. That's about yep. it. Honestly, That's... it's just a fun combo deck if you're into that. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Totally awesome. <laughs> uh, yes. So GP Vegas. Um, interesting i so we were talking a little bit about mm -hmm. this and like my argument is that it's good to see modern in a place where we're seeing a variety of decks in the top eight mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to will's point and he is right it's sort of the same decks over and over most of the time i will say kci is kind of a new one um here here is company is a bit it's, unexpected it's fringe for sure yeah here is my point um Modern is, you know, like the top five decks are at, at a tournament are going to be Death Shadow, Humans, uh, Tron of various descriptions. Uh, control deck. Yeah. Jeskai Control or, I don't know, some fifth deck of the month. I'm not sure. <laughs> I said five. I shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> Human Shadow, Tron, Control, usually Jeskai Control. Uh, we did see yeah, a lot of Scape Shift for a little while, too. Which I think is interesting. A few weeks, yeah. I mean, I don't for know. a little while, Scape Shift was up there. But but he, here's my point. Yeah. Uh, the meta kind of sets itself, like, kind of shakes out. And then a weird deck like uh, KCI, yeah. it's kind of a throwback, comes in and just messes things up. You know what I was thinking of? This GP is kind of an interesting, like, uh, past look at modern. Yeah. So you have KCI, yeah, yeah. which was big, like, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, you have Vizier Company, which is a lot like the uh, um, Birthing Pod. Yeah. Uh, Malira Pod. Malira Pod. And then you have Death Shadow, which was really big like last year. Yeah. And now you got Humans. And yeah. And Tron, which has been a mainstay. Yeah. Tron's so it's just kind, kind of, of like always been there. it's kind of like the family tree of modern a little bit. <laughs> but my point is, uh, the meta shakes out, and it's ripe for a weird deck like KCI 
um, or Vizier Company, which has uh, probably a really good matchup in the meta against yeah. most things, and then a few decks that just outright beat it. Yeah. Um, so it was ready for, like, I'm going to come in and take a GP. Yeah. Now's the time. <laughs> Someone who's been playing KCI for way too long is like, <laughs> now is my moment. <laughs> like flips open it's the happening. rock. Flips open the rock. Did we leave Mirrodin yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was for a long time. I've been in the camp that like modern's in a good place. It well, but like I, I'm starting to kind of get bored with it because I don't know. It's here's just. A, we're seeing a lot of the same decks in the top. Here's my thing. Um, modern isn't a good place, but what that means is the decks that are in it are unchallenged in that they are good enough to always be good. Yeah. And there's not a deck that's like, we have to beat this deck. It's kind of nice to have a deck that you have to beat sometimes. Yeah, because we think about, we've talked about Grixis Death Shadow that way. We've talked about humans that yeah. way. But what happens the weeks and weeks after... You start playing a few cards here in your sideboard in case you run up against humans, or you st or uh, enough people start playing humans that some weird deck that only beats humans is in, and it's really big. So modern like evolves very rapidly. It's like the flu; it changes really rapidly. Yeah, and it beats totally. it beats whatever medicine you've got for it. You know, that's fair. But then it just kind of goes away, and it's like, uh, yeah, someone gets the flu in like I don't know June, but uh, yeah. Totally. Does that work? Does yeah, that, that works. Does that, that analogy work? Does yeah, that, I'll go with that. Does that check out? I love that when we get really close to the microphone. <laughs> like, I feel like... <laughs> I just feel myself as I'm talking. Like, in the middle of a sentence, I'm like... I start back here, and then I'm like... Yeah, so anyway, GP Vegas. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> just get really close. Um, no, you're exactly right. Like, it's... I, I don't know. Am I? Do you... Uh, I think you're right. I, like... <sighs> For a long time, my thought was that humans was it was gonna take over a little bit. Mm. Um, the last time I felt that way was Death Shadow, and then humans came along, and mm. I definitely mm. felt like humans was kind of on the path to take it over. Um, but like you said, people just throw in sideboard tech, or they, I mean, throw a board wipe in there, and you're kind of yeah. good to go. You know what I mean? But I mean, like, that's kind of what you want in a competitive format. It right? kind of is, but when there aren't like, I want a brand new deck. That's what I want to see. And I yeah. know that's asking a lot, but like, sure. instead of like saying, hey, I have this control deck and humans is really good right now. So I'm just going to throw in a couple extra board wipes and I'll be good to go. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. like, I'll just play a faster combo deck or like whatever. <coughs> instead of building all of these pre-built decks, I want to see something kind of new. And humans was new. I was excited Definitely. about humans. Definitely I, I really liked that. And so I'm kind of glad that we had that. Now that it's sort of had its time though, I'd like to see which was the next short. One. It was not as long-winded as death. I there. definitely thought that humans would stick around a little bit longer. I mean, it's, stick it's around as in like clearly dominant. take over. Sure. Uh, death Shadow. I had heard that deck idea like years ago. Yeah. Uh, when Death Shadow first came out, and it was just, I mean, it was a deck for a little while, but it never really hit that competitive side until you know the last year, year and a half. Yeah. Well, something like that. What it was missing was its like extra value with the delve creatures right so when tassiger and uh angler got printed it just it's like okay further, you know what I we're mean? pitching like, stuff to dig anyway yeah. wouldn't it be great to get out a scary fish zombie exactly who doesn't love a scary fish and zombie? undead elf thing oh it's a human he's a human he's right? a human, he's a human shaman i mean he's super dead now so it doesn't whatever matter. he's a necklace um <laughs> He is. If you read, he is. If you read the lore. If you look at Slumdog. Um, he is a... He's a piece of jewelry. <laughs> Every kiss piece. begins with Tassiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. Um, yeah, I just... I don't know. I kind of want to see some new stuff. I like the Bant Company deck because it's a deck that is, like, reminiscent of breeding... Yeah. It's or a riff. birthing pod, but it's not, like... It's a riff it's on an old combo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely not. I think it's more fun... It's definitely more fun. You have it's to, not nearly as good. No. You which have is to fun. do a lot more to get the combo yes. out. Yes. Which is good because that means it's not just going to overtake. Right. And that's why like you don't that. see it in every list. Yeah. The top eight list. That yeah, is. Yeah. Um, is because you have to. It's easily disrupted, I'd say. Yes. Counter um, a few things. Kill a few things. Which Ewit, Ewit we didn't see in the previous. No. Like Vizier Company. I don't think we did. So that adds At a little bit of longevity. At least not of a playset. Or Selfless Spirit. Selfless Spirit is very key. 
So the guy, the guy who uh, played the list, his name escapes me. Forgive me. Um, he had an interesting point when he was asked about the about the deck. Um, uh, every top eight player was asked, "What's a uh, a powerhouse card in your deck? A card that really works?" And you I mean you'd expect like collect a company, duh. Yeah. Like the KCI player said, "KCI." <laughs> Period. Uh, <laughs> but this guy was like, selfless spirit. Protecting the combo was way better than having a crappy plan B. Yeah. Which, if you know me, I have a plan B in every deck yeah. I ever play. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he makes a great point that... Protecting plan A is sometimes If you're a combo better. deck, you only have one plan. Yeah, I mean, that, you're an all-in. Yeah, I mean, that's for the sure. idea. Which is pretty cool. But that deck has evolved a little bit. Um, so some decks in modern are still changing. I mean... It's always a fluid format. Magic, in general, is a fluid game. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it... My big draw from competitive Magic is... Yeah. You talk about, like, what are the other big games that are competitive? Um, I mean, sports in general, but... You can talk about StarCraft. You can talk about CSGO. You can talk about uh, League of Legends. Games that have captured millions of players' attention for a while... There is always a different way to play that game with the same pieces you always have. Yeah. In Magic, if you go into a tournament and you're playing a human's <sighs> deck, you are only playing a human's deck. Yeah, You're yeah. only playing a deck. You can't... There's not a lot of cute stuff you can do. There's not a lot of wiggle room for card right. slots. So what makes it more interesting, what makes, makes me keep coming back to Magic is this changing, evolving format, right? New things all the time. Yeah. And that, Kevin, is why you should play Standard. Because it's so exciting right now to play Standard. Give it a few months, Kevin. <laughs> I will say what's kind of interesting if you do look at the top eight lists, and like you said, there's really not much wiggle room. There just isn't. Uh, but occasionally you do get to see a little bit of a mix-up. Like I know one of the Tron decks was running uh, World Breaker or whatever. World whatever. I don't, I don't know. The green giant El Ghazi. Okay. What? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Hold right. on. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. World Breaker. Yeah. Was okay. <laughs> I was um, about to John Cena you. No, no, no. Um, Are you like, sure about that? World Breaker is only in one of the decks. It's not in the other one. And like, yeah, right. that's cool. But it's like one card. <laughs> like, there's like yeah. a one card difference. Yeah. Um, we did say like Dark Confidant made it splash in humans finally as um, a one of. Obviously, it was in the sideboard too as a second one. Um, but like. Again, it's one or two slots. There's just yeah. you play a deck and that's it. Um, I liked the one thing I did like about Birthing Pod was mm -hmm. that there were a million different ways to play a Birthing Pod deck. Oh, that's true. I mean, you could toolbox for anything. That was really cool. There was Malira Pod. There was Kiki Pod. There was mm -hmm. like a million different things, and there that was, like was actually fun. Agra Birthing Pod. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that. There was a blue green Birthing Pod. There's a bunch of ways. Unfortunately, like Splinter Twin was just a Splinter Twin deck. I'm trying to think of like the big ones. The Infect deck was Blazing Shoal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't know. That was the one good thing about the Birthing Pod deck in my mind. When yeah. it had its takeover, there were different ways to take over. Sure. I mean, what's fun in Magic is like going back to the kind of Wild West brewing days where you could kind of play yeah. a bunch of stuff. Which I guess to a lot of people's point, that's why vintage is like the purest form of magic. Because you can really make a bunch of stuff. Does that statement vintage. hurt you to say so it? So much, because it's definitely not. It kind of is. No. It, it, no, no, no. No, in the, it's not. In the instance of like, you can literally play anything, yeah, it is. Well, okay, that, but. I mean, I think but, that's a pretty big that. That's so not an honest form of magic. You can win on turn one. You yeah. can win before your opponent plays. Well, yeah, but your opponent can also disrupt you before they have anything to play. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes you can win on turn zero, but sometimes Well, here's the you thing. Can. Here's the thing. <laughs> they can disrupt you, but only if they play these this one card in their deck. Only if they have this thing. Well, it's like saying, okay, you can only win if you play this one card in your deck. I mean, you can take that either way. Well, yeah, that's the only way you don't win is if they play I'm saying, like, the deck that's going to win on turn zero can yeah. only win with a specific combo piece. Right? Sure, but it can do it, right? Yeah, so the other deck can only counter it by having a specific card. But what I'm saying is if they don't want to lose... But I, what I'm saying is you have, you've given every deck ever in Vintage the only option of playing that card. You give them a catch-22. You cannot play the card where you can lose. It's up to you. We're talking about Force of Will. Yeah, well, clearly. Right. <laughs> or Mental Misstep. <laughs> Uh, well, the and combos, mental misstep does fit into any deck. 
just pointing that out. Phyrexian mana. But the point I'm th the deck I'm thinking of wins like turn one, so mental misstep wouldn't matter. What do you mean? It I mean you can play it. it. Yeah, you can, but it doesn't touch the other decks. Oh, it like, doesn't touch no. the combo itself. Right, 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 oh, okay. right, right. You have to, you have to force it. Well, my thing is, normally you're gonna have to dig. I guess you can win on turn zero, but you really do have to have like the perfect hand to make that happen. Yeah, and that's so true. like that is true. But I'm saying you're if not. they're not playing, <laughs> if they're not playing, or if they don't have force of will, and I will also force say it's me. high risk, high reward with that deck because. Oh, it yes, always you is. you can win on turn zero. Nine times out of ten, that's not going to happen. And if you're too slow, you just die. I mean, yeah. Like, there is nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> like, All I'm saying is... I'm just saying. Vintage is... There are so many, like... Vintage is fun. It's good stuff. Why don't we ever talk about vintage? <laughs> do you... Me, is that an actual question you're fielding right now? Do you want me to? No, there is an actual reason that doesn't relate to you. I know. <laughs> it's not accessible. It's not accessible at it's all. It's so expensive. That's why nobody ever talks about it. Well, yeah, because no one can play it. Yeah. Because we Unless as a you play online. We have decided as a community then. that, that um, Black Lotus is worth $20,000. Why have we decided that? I don't know. Guys, it's up to us. We can change this. I mean, nobody. We're not, but the we could. List <laughs> is up to you. What? What music was that from? Oh, that's gonna haunt me. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry. Anyway, <laughs> this has been a fun one. Uh, yeah. So, what were we talking about before that? Competitive, competitive magic. magic. Um, yeah. Standards, the Jinx. most purest form of magic. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's why Rakdos is great. It's expertly tailored every season. To have an aggro deck and control <laughs> deck. <laughs> and the worst decks. The decks that aren't as good as those two. I sure. We're we're not gonna argue this. <laughs> but we it is though. For hours. But you know what's great? You know what's great about it though? In like a year you don't have to worry about it, because those decks won't be playable. <laughs> I'm serious. That's fair. I do like I mean, that's what keeps standard fresh is Heck yeah, dude. rotation. I prefer non-rotating formats, but that's just personal preference. I'm not... I... Okay. Here's my thing. Yeah. I don't hate any format in Magic. There is not a format that I actually hate. Um, Standard is my least tiny favorite. Leaders. <laughs> I don't hate Tiny Leaders. No, no one hates Tiny Leaders. Tiny Leaders is fun. Yeah. Maybe. No, it is. Um, it's <laughs> not, yeah, it not is as fun as Commander, but... No, it's like dumbed down Commander is what it feels like. Um, Ooh, to those Tiny Leaders purists. All five of you, sorry. <laughs> I can almost guarantee none of you watch this. So That's for sure. Um, but I'm just saying, like, there's not a format that I'm like, man, I hate this format. It's like, oh, that was fun, but I probably wouldn't go out of my way to play it again. Okay. You know what I mean? If somebody was like, hey, do you want to play Tiny Leaders? Sure, why not? But I don't, like, I don't have a Tiny Leaders deck just chilling, ready to go. Weird. Alicia smiles at death or whatever. I don't have that deck built. <laughs> That's an actual card. That's <laughs> just so we're clear. Dang, Alicia's pretty cool. Yeah, she smiles at death, dude. That's real stuff. There's so many questions that pop into my mind. Like, <laughs> she smiles at death, but then does she say anything? Yeah, and what's the, like, how did they get in the same room? Yeah. What like, what did? was the lead up? I mean, clearly she's dying. I mean, she might not be. She might be helping death. Ooh. You don't know that, right? Like, she might be the apprentice. Yeah, like, death shows up. He's all... Whew, sorry, I'm late. Traffic was terrible. Leech yeah. in the corner, like stabbing a dude. Hey, <laughs> great to see ya. <laughs> or it's like Death has an office job that nobody knows about, <laughs> <laughs> and Alicia's just the administrative assistant, <laughs> not the secretary. We have to say administrative assistant, and so oh. she like has to be happy every time. But like mm. in the secret, she like turns to her coworkers he's like. God, Death is just in a bad mood today. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. Death, know. your mail's here. He's got like a stack of suicide letters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're moving on. This and, is terrible. and that was it. Oh. That's it. Question of the week time. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Sometimes I go too far. I'm sorry. We always go too far. Question of the week time. Uh, we are going to repeat the same question for this week right. and also next week. Yep. Um, yep, 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 what yep, yep. suggestions do you have to celebrate our 100th episode? And it's obviously coming up in two weeks, and we want to do something kind of special. 
Uh, but we don't know what. Yeah, we're not. Which sure. is a problem because it's two weeks away. We, we have some ideas, prepare. but there. Yeah, we do have some ideas. It'd be a long episode, but we have an idea. It'd be such a long episode. I don't know if we should do that. We'll, we'll talk about it. I'll bring some some energy dwinks. Dwinks. And we'll get through it together. Moving on to our last segment, we have our <laughs> our crack of packs of Dominaria with yep. our goal cards in mind, sponsored by Grand Slam <clears throat> Comics and Collectibles. Will, what is your goal card? The Steel Leaf Champion. You saw the M19 spoilers. Gigantic. With the 1010. We Dude, need to talk about that next week. Mono Green is going to be kind of insane. You know what R&D was like? <laughs> they were like, Fine. If you're only going to play red, we're going to make green so good. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. We're going to give you a 10-10 with trample. Just block that. <laughs> block it. Who cares? Rosewater's in the corner like, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> I've given them dinosaurs. That's my Mark Rosewater impression, I think. It's really good. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was terrible. <laughs> and so we saw that red was taking over the format. We said, hmm. <laughs> what can we do? Dinosaurs. That was the answer that all along. I said, Mark. <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, anyway, uh, Michael card is squee. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, You're it here. Happens. <laughs> You're here. I forgot. Eh, nope. So uh, for falls. Uh, that's, that's my rare. Exciting. What you got there, bud? What you got there, buddy? Uh, I got Torgar, Famine Incarnate. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is definitely my pick. Because he's a monster. Literally. Yeah, literally. Actually, he's an avatar, literally. But that's okay. No, he's a monster. Oh, you're a monster. You're a monster! Not Name the gumdrop buttons! Movie. Man, how good is Shrek, though? <laughs> is what? Nothing. That was Toy Story. Uh, <laughs> did, 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 the gumdrop did, buttons you... is Toy Story. Or, Not uh, the gumdrop buttons! Wow. It is. I was, I was being facetious. You're facetious. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> this is a really bad pack for limited. Ooh, I've got rescue, right. which is cute, but that's not. I hate rescue. So it's my my two card. picks for turn one would be Baird, Steward of Argive. He's good. He's fine. Um, that might be it, actually. Yeah, it might be Baird or Keldon Raider. So four three also when good. he comes in, I can discard a card. I can yeah. loot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can rummage. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. I get the two confused. Loot is backwards. Draw a card, then discard a card. Right. Yeah. Loot okay. is better. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good card. And it's a bigger yeah. beater. It's 4 3, yeah. Than Bard. I mean, it depends what I want to do. Do I want to slow yeah, down the game? Yeah, exactly. I, I think in terms of cards that affect board state, Baird's better. So yeah, that's my pick. Definitely. He's also a legend, which is important. Sure. <laughs> Relatively. Baird's DP. And it puts me kind of in my blue white comfy zone. It's blue either white black, red, good. or blue, white. I'm not... <laughs> Which are, like, polar opposites. I know, but it, um, it all depends on, like... I weirdly policy. really like green, white, just because it's always, like, generally solid. It's, it's just really like good in dominant area. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, green, black is also fun. Green, black, I find... Green, black, I think, more often than not, has the most interaction between it, each other. Yes. Like in a, in it's, like, very itself. synergistic. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Thanks for... Um, Translating. I do what I can. Um, I generally like green black a lot, mm -hmm. and I tend to do better with green black than some other colors, but yeah. it's often like I either have a really good green black deck or it's like didn't get there at all. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? I just am missing all the key pieces. Well, the so thing with a synergistic happen. deck is, yeah, this is exactly it that. It has you to have, have the key pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Interesting. I forgot what um the big scaly. I guess kind of soon we're going to be hitting 2019 corset. Not yeah. super soon, but in like a month and a half or something. Um, interesting. Gigantosaur might be my uh, <laughs> my cool card. Well, it's already mine, so oh, okay. back off. Whoever gets it first. It's a race to Gigantosaur. I'm down for that. Do you know that movie? No. What is that? That's like one of the most recognizable movie scores of all time. What is it? Would it help to say some of the lines from the movie? Sure, why not? We got time. <laughs> when you first hear that song, uh, the title of the movie is kind of in the script, but after that, this doctor starts crying. He goes, they do walk into hurts. Oh, Jurassic Park? Yeah! You know, I haven't ever seen the original Jurassic Park. I saw Jurassic World. 
It was good. Mm-hmm. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, we don't swear on this podcast. <laughs> what? But what the flit, man? <laughs> you have never seen Jurassic Park? You were just shaking everything. Yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> End this episode Let right everybody now. Down. All right, guys, we end are gonna it get right out. now. End it. <laughs> Bye, Kevin. End it. We're getting out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> this minute resolves. <laughs>